The 2007 elections in Nigeria were marred by widespread violence and allegations of vote rigging. Over 200 people were reported to have been killed in election-related violence, and several polling stations were set ablaze. In 2011, elections were also characterized by violence, particularly in the northern parts of the country. Following the announcement of the presidential results, Violence erupted in some northern states, leading to the deaths of hundreds of people. The violence was mostly attributed to ethnic and religious tensions, as well as political rivalries. In 2015, the general elections also had pockets of violence. The Boko Haram insurgency in the northeast of the country disrupted voting in several areas, and there were also reports of clashes between rival political parties in some states. In 2019, the elections were also marked by violence and irregularities. There were also reports of vote buying, ballot box snatching, and attacks on polling stations. The violence was particularly pronounced in some states in the South, where there were reports of clashes between rival political groups. The causes of electoral violence in Nigeria are multifaceted and complex, including ethnic and religious tensions, poverty, corruption, and a lack of trust in electoral institutions. The consequences of such violence are severe, including loss of life, destruction of property, and a general sense of insecurity and instability. To prevent electoral violence in the upcoming elections, it is crucial to address the underlying causes and strengthen the institutions responsible for ensuring free and fair elections in Nigeria. My name is Mariam Bukar Hassan, known as Alhan Islam. I am a poet, the curator of True My Voice, and the campaign coordinator for Change.org in Nigeria. It is very important as people that God has blessed with the gift of words to partake and participate in critical issues of advocacy in the country for the betterment of the people and the country. And it is for that reason that we, the storytellers at True My Voice, have decided to come together to lend our voice in saying no to electoral violence because Nigeria is still our own. To speak about building the future of Nigeria is to conjure up the ghost of a warrior. An Iroka tree that stood tall in the forest survived the axe with broken branches that answers questions of vulnerability. With falling dried leaves, creating a pathway leading to my heart, me, a citizen. A citizen of a country whose hope lingers like the life of an antelope who wakes up every morning with its heart beating out its chest because I know there's a cheetah out there, I must outrun, else I become prey, praying every day that somehow we see the light and hope for the nation. To speak about building the future of Nigeria is to recall handshakes between the Princess Alexandra and Satafao Balewa in 1960 that held promises of generations, aspirations of what it is for a dream to come true, an answered prayer. To speak about building the future of Nigeria is to revisit the words of Sir Enamdi Azikiwe in 1959, where he said, for 25 years of my life, I have fought for the freedom of Nigeria. Nigeria will gain independence on October 1st, 1960, and it makes no difference who becomes prime minister, whether Tafal Balewa, Awolowo, or myself. So long as Nigeria is free, I will be satisfied. To speak about building the future of my country is to acknowledge the resilience of the youths. So when a youth says, I love my country, I love my country, but because words signifying doubt yet serving as a seal to conviction like, but I forgive my kinsmen and for my country, I will represent. Like, you broke my heart, but I still love you with all the pieces that looks exactly like that on the map of my country that connects us, yet most mistake it for scars, causing upheaval by digging up stories of injuries like, but I wish to be taken back to the days when the 521 ethnic groups, the over 600 distinct languages, represented love and diversity, 
when animosity had no room, so we collectively put it out of the house. So when the instigator says, fight you your neighbor who speaks not like you, whose tongues are maps, will I make an offering of my sister on the tree or my brother a sacrifice? Will I become Abraham, hoping that God sends a replacement? Or shall I stain the altar and become Cain? But this time, I tell them, Abel will not die. Abel will see the light. Hello, everyone. The Canadian High Commission is proud to lend our voice to advocating for peace in this very important electoral period. As we all know, this week, Nigeria will undergo its general elections, representing a pivotal moment for the country's democratic process. We view these elections as an opportunity, an opportunity for citizens to have their voice heard, an opportunity to drive change and shape the country's future, and an opportunity for Nigeria to serve as a model for the region, as Africa's largest democracy. We are encouraged by a number of positive developments in the lead up. In particular, the surge in voter registration demonstrates a renewed interest in political participation across the country, particularly among young Nigerians. But at the same time, Nigeria is facing record levels of insecurity and electoral violence has been on the rise. Also, politically active women are disproportionately impacted. In this context, promoting inclusive governance, peace and democracy are key priorities for Canada. We are proud to partner with the True My Voice initiative to support broader efforts of Nigerian poets and storytellers in advocating for peace, pluralism and unity in the context of Nigeria's electoral period. We will continue to support those working to advance these priorities in Nigeria and around the world. I would like to conclude by making a call to all parties across Nigeria to refrain from violence before, during, and after the elections. This is essential for Nigeria's stability and democracy itself. When the man dies, would the autopsy say he was a Christian? If our bodies are the temple of God, am I less a house of worship because I am Muslim? A graveyard full of oxygen is how death demands breathing space. Last week, policeman told a boy freeze. He became a cold room. Where I come from, we are a quick notice away from becoming vacant bodies. My people share a boundary with the afterlife. My father says, a name is a holy thing. As if you say it long enough, your tongue could curl into a shrine. But I tell him, a name is also a prophecy, for how else can you explain why a country named after a river could wash the blood of her people flow? As a massacre 1967, Bakolori massacre 1980, Boko Haram uprising 2009, or massacre 2022. Death is not the only natural disaster here, for what does an election have in common with an earthquake? They end in a landslide. We have been told more promises than the holy book and back to more journey than the Israelites took. So when they promise to Christmas today, know that tomorrow, Herod will call for the slaughter of every male child. It is a taboo to dream here. How do you sleepwalk in a country where every day is a living nightmare? The search for a white collar job could leave you nothing a noose around your neck. At the body language of an ex, everything is falling down the pecking order. But is this all there is to us? scorched earth and zombie invasion. If we dig deeper beneath the earth of our fatherland, would we be able to excavate enough survival stories from their rotting teeth? September 30, 1960, Independence Day Eve, USA 1994, Rashidi Yekini's calls our first World Cup goal. What else is more magic? 
and a nation torn apart by tribes, brought together by a football celebration. What else is more magic? And hands at once held grief at their fingertips, snapping at a punchline. I want heard as why hell burns for so long. It's because the human spirit is indestructible. I believe in the science of shifting skies enough to know that rain is not the clouds last parade. There are rainbows in our bellies yet unborn with colors like none the world has ever seen. In 1978, my great grand uncle, Ben Odiasi, composed the national anthem. He once told me, at the funeral dirge, it's just a few lyrics short of a victory song. And every day since, I have lived my life like the missing words. Uh, my name is Dr. Amina Amina Dorei, and I'm the country director for Pathfinder International in Nigeria. I say no to election violence. Nigeria is a growing economy. It's a very promising economy, especially for the young people. And I think that election violence has the tendency to um, impact on that uh, potential. Election violence can, you know, affect the human capital development. Uh, it can affect almost all the sectors in Nigeria, including the tourism industry. Uh, there won't be faith in the um, safety and security of investors. Uh, it also has the potential of impacting on the, um, the overall well-being of um, men, women, communities, and especially have an impact on also uh, youth participation and women participation because once uh, people feel unsafe when they come to vote, will affect their power to actually exercise their voting rights. Uh, so I definitely say no to election violence. Keep safe during this period, vote for your conscience, and make sure that uh, we're all together to improve and make the country a better place for all of us. Thank you. This is home. This is our source. This is the story we want to tell. Stories of our delicacies. Amala, Ati, Eforiro, Akbu, and Egusi, with a table of Ishio as an aftermath. Have you tested Ojabashan or Okoyo? Or Ekpan Isese? Come, let us wash hands like a priest preparing for a holy ceremony. Let us feast like our joy is complete, for indeed this is our fatherland. So come with a mother's tongue and a maiden name. Come with the dynamic of culture. Ida Hausa, Basa, Igala, or Yoruba, Tangali, Ishekiri, Kalabari, or Bagi. Let the sounds bring us together. Ibo, Urobo, Isoko, or Ibibio, in a feast of diversity. Every tongue is a guest. So come home, no matter the tribe. This is still our Nigeria. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Alhamdulillah, our dear nation, uh, Nigeria is on the verge of holding another uh, election uh, in the next couple of days. And one thing I want to say is for any you know, candidate that you might have um, selected or you might have the um, choice to want to go to the polls and, you know, hopefully vote for. Uh, I urge you that regardless of who you have in your heart, that you want to be the leader of this nation, do not make that as your sole, uh, your sole ambition or your sole goal when you go to the, to the polls. Remember that this nation is a nation of great people, of great minds. We are diverse in our tribes, in our views, in our opinions. So no matter what, respect people's views, respect their opinions, and look for the greater good that would enable this country to heal from the years of um, from the years of corruption, for, from the years of ineptitude. Um, we all deserve a nation that is great. We all deserve a nation that makes us to feel safe, makes us to feel inspired to do good, makes us to change the world in our own little way. So whichever from the leaders that you want to select today, we pray for the best of them, but whomever you select, ensure that you do not force your selection down the throats of every other person. Ensure that you do not um, embark on violent, uh, violent uh, 
issue you do not embark on any form of violence in order to promote the person that you want to be a leader respect the selections of others respect the opinions of others there is no deadline for grief neither is there a manual to tell a man how long to hold his grudge there is no deadline for grief because some of us are still searching for kindness let's keep looking maybe one day we'll find what the world borrowed from us but never returned there is no deadline for grief neither is there a manual to tell a man how long to hold his grudge but how long before we see that this hate we are harboring is a wild animal. We cannot keep it for a pet for too long. One day, it will wake up and make a feast out of all of us. My name is Hadiza Hassan. I'm the creative director of Minimal Concepts, and I say no to electoral violence. As a young entrepreneur, there are so many dangers that electoral violence causes, not to mention the number of hindrances and the danger that it might cause to your life. Please endeavor to stay safe during this election period. Thank you. It is driving me crazy, so I might just get a gun soon, but if we all get guns, then we all might be gone soon. I have heard tales of chaos and wars, stories that touch even a dead man's soul, and I wonder, I wonder if peace will come thereafter. I wonder if life comes before death or we're dying so it leave. I wonder if peace comes before wars or we're fighting wars to live in peace. I wonder as I listen to tales of whole families slain and rumors of towns filled with blood stains. I wonder why humanity will strangle itself with its own hands and hang its children on the rope of hatred it has weaved with ethnicity and religion standing as hangmen. I have cried to the heavens but it seems that our gods have been slain too. And now the earth has had enough of the poor man's blood. These days it regurgitates it even. For it thirsts for the blood of these bloodthirsty politicians. So if the offer is gone to rid the poles, we will go. But only if the Apisa eaten sons will lead the way. And if they send us money instead, we will know. We'll send them letters in black envelopes and watch their sentences turn into pestilence. Then with the strength of every youth, we will vote in the kind of Pisa the noise. And if they decide to rig the elections and not count our votes, we will come again another day and vote another day. The doom that took my brother's chest into a tomb had this kind of bloom that only seek to consume young boys. And may your votes and mine never be mistaken for a bag of omo and salt tied in a black nylon to buy your votes and mine, my rights and yours, your freedom and mine, your existence, your existence, your existence and mine, and all of us that have soiled our hands. Whoa. This reminds me of Amir Suleiman's Vagabond because I am not a hero and I'm gonna die soon and I might never be a hero and die the deaths of regular men. This compels me back to the road again, running from home to home and back again. I am Vagabond. I recite this twice to console our broken bodies of all the people these fingers might thump into the wrong places and today, today like every other beginning of a new era, people are gathering before my eyes electing a leader that knows nobody's face. So I fold myself into a prayer and seek a thousand more years for my country's reign. Hello, my name is Alabi Olamide and I'm saying no to electoral violence. A lot of us have a great future ahead of us and it will be cut short if we decide to get involved in electoral violence. Stay calm and let's hope that the best will come for us. Please stay away from electoral violence. It does no good. Thank you. What do you think about electoral violence? Uh, I don't know anything about election, but all I know is just make people not just cause, but they don't cause trouble because election power is no good. We get right to vote for any candidates we want to vote for. So I just advise people say may they no cause wala. If you know if you know if you vote, just day inside your house and day inside your house they enjoy. But if you see say you go be vote can vote for any candidates you want. Fowler is no good. Nothing wrong is that do. Uh, for this country, you knows our, our leader today they do us. So we have no need to be cause violence. To be cause what I mean. You I don't support election violence because I believe in a free and fair election. We all have the right to vote for who we want. Personally, I've not experienced election violence, but I stand against any form of violence during election. So, 
guys i know it's election season and you know we're trying to use our poems for this advocacy but with this amazing performance really what inspired you to write that piece <laughs> okay um let me be honest right <laughs> yeah yes yeah. so for the it, uh, if a friend of mine was telling me we have 18 presidential candidates, I don't know, I can't remember it here. Yeah. But it feels like we just have three. We have an evil man, a Yoruba man, and a Hausa man. And if we are being honest, that's how people see it. Yeah. They just feel like, okay, should we vote an evil man? They're not saying Peter Obi, should we vote, vote Sinibu? They're not saying Yoruba man, some people. Should we vote Atiku Abubaka? They're not saying... I think well, we're working, sorry, they're seeing the person, yeah, they're seeing the tribe, yes. And in th- that, I think it's, <laughs> I don't know, it just does not make sense to me. Especially because I don't think it, your tribe actually affects your leadership skills. I, I, I don't know psychology, right? I don't think me being an evil girl means I can lead a country better or me. It's, it's the way, you hear conversations that are, ah, an evil man can, does not know anything about governorship government they just know market or the like, Yoruba man they, they you know those things i think that was one of the things that i always know yes they, they can be very educated they know book and big grammar look at what they should and what they should come and rule the country and then they're like and how some man just know about politics yeah and, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah there are certain things that stereotypes yeah they there are certain stereotypes and we just these expectations people play into them and all of that. I think that that was one of the reasons I had to, for me, I, I saw that beyond this tribe thing, right? If we're being honest, it goes beyond just the surface. Mm-hmm. There we, before, there, there's a poet, a South African poet that said, before we can, you know, make up, we have to actually talk about the problem. Mm-hmm. Don't just tell me to forgive you or forgive me. Let's actually have conversation about the issue. And I know that the thing about our country, this division, it's more than just um, a white guy saying, okay, these guys should come together. We feel, ah, you shouldn't have joined us together. No, some things happened. We are scarred and we should, no, you would think as a line said, there is no deadline for grief. You think some people have moved past that, but they haven't really. They haven't, they haven't, they haven't. I feel like it sounds chillish, shallows. What inspired my piece was more or less, I was trying to look at my country and all the bad things people are saying about the country. And I realized that in order to be a paragon for change, you have to look inwards first. That was why I was able to connect it to where my big grand uncle wrote the national, composed the national anthem. And I felt that picking it from that point of where I'm coming from, how I've been put in work to change the country looking at that inspires me to be just like them and i feel like if we all on our own go back and look at how their cultural and um, background has a role to play in nationhood they would tend to be much more involved in things that concerns their country because everybody has this artist outlook of nigeria it's you know it is it is beyond hope Nigeria is always bad. The things Fela said back then are still things that are still happening. And they were like, there's no lights and that. You know, they were able to chronicle all that. But my, my own way of writing is, I want to ask like, have we always been this way? Mm. Was there ever a time whereby we were ever happy as a people? Because when I go to the junior center to watch football, nobody remembers that, oh, um, I am Igbo, you're about how so they are, they, are, they are all like, oh, I'm a Man U fan, I'm a Chelsea fan. When we have the World Cup, for example, mm. or like the like um, Afcon, yeah. you know everybody is all supporting the Nigerian team. So when the team scores a goal, we forget that in that same team we have the Hausa, we have the Igbo, we have people from different tribes of Nigeria who work to achieve that goal. And right then, the viewing center will always like shout. You see, sometimes we even hug ourselves and forget that you know. No, we are we are not from so I wanted to to conjure up that feeling when I perform my poem and use that to inspire hmm. people that would be able to listen to it. That that's that's amazing. I think the part where you asked like was there a time when we were happy as a people 
and you know <clears throat> was there a time that we actually achieved something yes it made me remember someone um um wale his name is wale i was having a conversation with him and he said to me that Nigeria is a case of a teenage pregnancy. And I asked him why he said that and he said because when we think about how old Nigeria is, Nigeria is just 60, right? 60, 61. Yes. And when our people start to compare Nigeria with America, they forget that America is over 400 years. It's over 400 years, yes. And you know, he said, if we were to compare um, how America was when it was 60 to how Nigeria, you know, is today, now that it's 60, you would see that even our people are really trying. Like, we are really trying as a people. And that, you know, there is work that needs to be done. And he is not saying there isn't. However, also now having this instant technology where you're able to see what is happening in this country in that country in this country and how we ourselves right we keep projecting the bad things more that are happening in, in our country as opposed to the good that is happening in our country and then that is what becomes the media yeah, yeah. yes and so by doing that you are killing your country and then even other people that are in the country that don't know about some of these things you are now making them to feel even more hopeless. Yeah. So he, he said that, and, and I think it was really uh, profound, and I just wanted to, to like get that out there. Katie, do you mind telling us what inspired you? Okay, so I think um, one of the poets, I like to say very few poets, got out of angry poems. <laughs> I like any kind of poem that is not angry, even if I usually sound angry. <laughs> you, don't, you don't sound angry. Oh, really? You're always smiling. You don't sound angry. Oh, okay. your, poem, your poem just makes me feel like, oh, yeah, there's... Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so... And I, I just feel like enough of the angry poems, right? No matter what happens, there are things that will never change. One of the things that will not change about us is the different ethnic groups is that we have so many tribes in Nigeria. And you know, there's this popular opinion of focusing on the Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa thing, mm -hmm. like she said. There's that popular thing. That was the reason I just looked out for other tribes. At least there's Igala somewhere, there's Kalabari, there's Tangali, there's Bagi somewhere. Come on, can we just give those people some audience? Yeah. yeah. That was why I brought in their food, their meal too. I'm tired of it. In as much as I still mentioned, because of course, popular opinion is still what some people Sounds say. Yes, yeah. exactly. So in general, not you can people. give people, yeah. you can tell people what they want to hear, and then inform them alongside. So in as much as if they said Aku, have you tested Ojabasha? Have you tested like there are other yes. meals you can actually have in Nigeria? And I think Nigerian restaurant should adopt that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's go to a restaurant that eats granola soup. I don't want to yeah. just go to the north and then I don't believe for somebody that could do granola yes. soup. So. Yes. I, I think we just, that's the reason I brought in with the um, instruments to the tambourine and all of that. We used that a lot when I was in secondary school. And our principal used to always say they are very African, they are very African. But she was, she's Nigerian, but then she spent a good time of her life in Ghana, so she had a little bit of the accent. And we, she, we made sure to use gong, pot drums, and all of that. So I think it was a Catholic school, so Catholics have the habit of using pot drums and tambourines and all of that still. So, we used all of that, so after school, I've not seen much of those kind of instruments. And then, it's still one of the things that wouldn't change. I feel like it won't change, no matter how technological we become. There will still be these things, and all of that. There will still be different tribes, there will still be different meal, and then there will still be different instruments. Um, guys, thank you so much uh, for, for uh, you know, blending your voice, as you always do. Thank you to poets generally, you know. Um, I would I would love for, for us to actually maybe share the, the poem that was written um, by the by the members. Um, we would share that piece. And also, uh, Salmis, do you want to speak a little to the petition that we started? We started a petition to advocate for no violence during the coming elections. And it's not just on the side of the government, but we also have the NGOs, the citizens, the electorates, the electoral bodies as well. 
they have a role to play in ensuring that um, the election goes free and fair. Because at the end of the day, we are the ones that will suffer from the losses when they happen. So it is very, very pertinent that even though at the end of the day, who I want to win does not eventually win, I should be able to understand that in the long run, for the collective good of the country, we have to still come together and contribute our quota to nation building. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, we would also be, you would be seeing the link to this petition. So please go ahead and sign this petition. Lend your voice. We started this petition on change.org. Um, and yeah, so thank you so much. And I do pray that you stay safe and have a good election. Say no to election, Val. Say no to election, I vow it. What was that really? <laughs> The election we want. An election where Nigeria becomes better for you and I. A prayer sandwiched between anger and desire. Where voices of all can be heard and every vote counts in the final word. A peaceful election that is hitch free. Where souls don't scurry about in search of their bloodied shells. An election where hearts bruised will find healing again. An election where our rights aren't trampled upon like dust but protected like pure gold. Let's listen to the sorrowful music of centuries and rise above selling our votes. May the people's will be reflected and their desires duly respected. An election where blood doesn't come home before sons. A chance to speak with our collective voice. An election with color where gray world sees to last. An election we want where our mother's tears don't get stream overflowing. An election we want, fair and just. An election of us, by us, for us. So help us God. We at the True My Voice community have come together to write this poem and also start a petition on change.org calling for zero electoral violence. This is in order to save lives, to protect properties, and to also protect the Nigerian economy at large. Sign this petition as a commitment to saying no to electoral violence and share the petition. <laughs>